Howdy y'all and welcome back to what is probably our last edition of Storytime with me, Miss T and Mr. Gum and the Goblins. Of course, not our last story time ever, just our last story time with this book because we are officially on the last chapter. It is chapter 12, no, it is chapter 13, The Truth About It All. Kick back, relax, and let's finish this baby off. Chapter 13, The Truth About It All. See, laughed Terry, I'm not Captain Ankles at all. These fins and spikes and claws and things, they're not real. They're just costumes. But why did you behave so bad and pretend to be goblins? Asked Polly in confusion. I'm ashamed to say it's because we were horribly naughty children, said Caroline, stepping forward with a red face. We didn't like going to school one little bit. Don't get any ideas. And one afternoon, the teachers made us be in a pathetic school play called 300 Goblins Standing Around Doing Nothing, said Alex, who used to be the goblin known as Big Steve. Only we didn't want to, continued a tall girl called Vicky. Previously, Soup Dog. So we ran away to Goblin Mountain, still in our costumes, said Eric. Yak Triangle. And we ran amok and lived like savages, and we acted so wild that eventually we forgot we had ever been children at all, confessed Brian. Yippee. And one day, Mr. Gum and Billy Williams spied us, said Veronica, Oink Balloon, and they thought we really were goblins, and by then we had forgotten all of our lessons or even how to speak properly. So we just joined their army for a spiteful laugh. But now the fruit chew of Babylon has made us understand how important school is said Terry. Otherwise, we might end up like Mr. Gum or Billy William, who never did learn better. But please, don't make us go back to our old school. It was just no good. Children, said Alan Taylor, who had been listening carefully. Which school were you at? Dr. No Fun School of Boredom, of course, replied Alex. Yes, I've heard about Dr. No Funds, sighed Alan Taylor. They're very old fashioned there. But at St. Pterodactyl School for the Poor, we believe in teaching children about the natural world and letting them do paintings about how they're really feeling inside. Oh, we'd like to go there ever so much, chorused the children. I'm sorry said Alan Taylor sadly. There are no available places. The children's faces fell. Only joking, cried the gingerbread prankster, his electric muscles whirring merrily. Come with me, you will be my first ever pupils. And away he jigged up the hill, the children skipping happily after him. Look, children, Polly heard him say as they disappeared from view. That tall brown thing over there is known as a tree. After that, everyone congratulated everyone else and all of the townsfolk were full of joy and merriment. Well, nearly all of them. You were going to put me in that machine, weren't you? said Jonathan Ripples tapping Martin Laundrette on the shoulder with a chubby finger. Yes, I was, admitted Martin Laundrette, trying to look ashamed. But um, now the fruit chew of Babylon has taught me the error of my ways. Forget it, Skinny, 
said Jonathan Ripples sternly. You are so getting sat on. Everything's back to normal, smiled Polly, looking on as Martin Laundrette was squashed into oblivion. But hold on, what about Mr. Gum and Billy? Don't you worry about them, said Friday, tapping his nose. I left them on Boaster's Hill. They promised to wait for me to come back with something to tie them up with. And look, he said proudly, I've just bought a nice bit of rope. Why, Polly, whatever's wrong? Them two scrappers done tricked you, said Polly, shaking her head sadly. I bet you anything they run off by now. Nonsense, said Friday confidently. They'll still be there, after all. Mr. Gum and Billy William are very trustworthy men. Oh, he said, realizing he'd been fooled by master criminals. Oops. Never mind, Friday, said Polly. The important thing is, Lamonic Bib is okay, and it's time for a big pig blowout feast. So, off they skipped to the town square to find the feast already underway. And what a turnout! Nearly everyone was there. Old Granny, the little girl called Peter, Marvelous Marvin the retired wrestler, Beanie McLeany, who loved things that rhymed, was having a chat about a cat with a bloke in a hat. And Jake the dog was helping Mrs. Lovely to make sweets by licking up the bits that fell on the floor. And when Mrs. Lovely's back was turned, he was helping by making bits fall on the floor on purpose. But where's the spirit of the rainbow? said Polly, looking around. He should be here, enjoying the fun and showing everyone what a winner he is. That honest lad cares not for rewards and fame, little miss, nodded Friday wisely. And that is why he is the spirit of the rainbow and not a snooker player or something. Oh well, I'll tell you who did turn up though. That rabbit from the mountainside. It hopped into Polly's skirt pocket and there it sat for the rest of the day, drinking a carton of apple juice. Oh, and Alan Taylor came back down the hill with his new pupils, and they had already done loads of amazing paintings showing how they really felt inside, and everyone clapped. Good work, children, said Alan Taylor, and he rewarded them all with tiny gold stars and ten, ten bonus Alan points each. And from Polly's skirt pocket, the rabbit watched the whole happy affair. All's well that ends well, its bright green eyes seem to say. Mmm, this is nice apple juice. And the laughter and the capering continued on, and none laughed louder or capered harder than Polly and her good friend Friday O'Leary. For though their legs were tired from their long journey, their hearts were bursting like joyful apricots to be back where they belonged. Look, Frides, exclaimed Polly at length. The snow's a-melting and the sun's coming out. Proud as you please, and soon all the ice cream vans will come out of their hibernation. I do believe you're right, said Friday. What an adventure it's been. Tell you what, he nodded getting out his blue guitar. This calls for a song. You better hurry up then, said Polly. I got the feeling we're nearly out of time. Time, little miss, laughed Friday. Why, we've got all the time in the... And that, my friend, is the end. Why, Polly, whatever's wrong? Them two scruffers done tricked you, said Polly, shaking her head sadly. I bet you anything they's run. 
I bet you anything they've run. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah.